Hi everyone, I'm Holly from Handprinted and today's project is all about cyanotype. Cyanotype, sometimes called blueprints or photograms, is a really old process that uses light to create designs on fabric and paper and they look like this. So here's one using a leaf, this is actually carrot tops from the garden. We're going to paint the solution onto fabric and paper, dry it in the dark and then we're going to use different objects as masks. Put the paper and fabric out in the sun. The sun is going to expose the designs onto the paper. The first thing you're going to need to do is get your hands on a cyanotype kit. Now the one that we have comes in two bottles like this, part A and part B. They're powder in the bottle, so the first thing you need to do is fill them up with water to dilute them. It's best to do this 24 hours before you're going to make your cyanotype, so make sure you do it the day before. Um, but you can leave it longer if you want to. I mix these up last weekend. I'm using cup cycle um, recycled paper, which is made from old coffee cups. Um, we sell that in the hand printed uh, shop, um, but you can use any papers that you've got. You want to make sure that they'll handle being wet. So try to do something not too thin, not too fragile, and something that isn't gonna go too wrinkly. Watercolor paper or something like that, that should work. Um, some handmade papers will work, so experiment with what you've got. I'm also going to be using uh, Prima cotton, but lots of fabrics will work. And once the process is, is finished, um, they will be washable and uh, the designs will be fixed. So I'm in a room with quite subdued lighting. I've got the blinds closed. It's, it looks lighter in here in, in film um, than it is in real life. It's actually quite, it's quite dark in here. I've got my two solutions that I've mixed up. I already added water to these. A couple of days ago. I'm going to mix them in equal quantities um, into a jar here. You only want to mix up what you need. It only lasts for a couple of hours once you've mixed them. So that's jar of solution one. Jar of solution two. And they look quite pale green at the moment, so not blue yet. Give it a good mix. So this is going to last about two to four hours once the solutions are mixed together. So you want to use them straight away. I'm going to paint on some paper and on some fabric. and they need to dry in the dark, so I'm going to squirrel them away in some cupboards around the house. While your papers and your fabrics are drying, you can start to assemble all the bits and bobs that you need to create your designs. So I've got a little bowl here of random things that I've collected around from my house, all sorts of stuff. You can also use leaves and plants as well. It'll give you really lovely um, designs like the original photograms that they used to make. So have rummage around the house and garden, see what you can find. You may also want to pin um, your objects down onto your papers if it's a little bit windy or if you have it you can put a sheet of glass on top if all your objects are nice and flat to hold them down. Especially if you're working outside in the sunshine, things can blow away um, so it's good to hold them, hold them still so you get a nice clear design. The flatter the object, the crisper the lines are going to be in your design so try and choose something that have quite a flat base shape so you can get your um, nice crisp design. My fabrics and papers have been drying for an hour or so now. Um, so they're, they're fully dry. They've been in the dark the whole time. So no, no, it should be able to get to them um, to expose it before I want it to. Um, I'm now gonna take them down to the garden um, to expose them. And I'll show you the process. I don't want any light to get to them really between um, taking them from the dark out to, into the garden. So I'm going to keep them in between two, I've just got two trays, but you can put them in a black bag, something like that, just to keep them dark, to make sure that we get a really good exposure um, only when we want to. So my cyanotypes have been out here for 
about eight minutes. It's quite overcast now, so there's not a lot of direct sun, but it is still quite um, bright as you can probably see. And this is what they look like now. They've started to turn um, kind of navy, almost bronze. I'm going to leave them for a little bit longer just to make sure that they're properly exposed so that I get good dark blues. I've got my exposed cyanotypes clamped between these two trays so I'm keeping them in, in the dark and now it's time to wash them out. Now I've finished making my cyanotypes, I've given them a good rinse out. You want to keep them in the water for about five minutes if you can. I've got this one that I showed you earlier from a previous batch that's got carrot tops. This one worked out really well using this ampersand and a couple of other metal things. This was a spoon. This is a good example. Um, you can see where if the object lays completely flat, on the paper or fabric you get nice crisp edges and if it raises up like the end of that spoon there so the spoon picks up you get fuzzy edges like this so experiment with different shapes um, and different objects to give different effects they work really well on fabric too I've got a geranium here and some more carrot tops showing up in a really nice dark blue Got my fabric with sewing items, safety pins, scissors, thimble, needle threader, and some buttons on there. And here this one was metal objects at the top, some metal um, leaves, and then these are glass. You can see how it's let some light through to give these lovely different shades. So this round one was this bit of bit of glass from Murano, this is, found in the waters of Murano. Got this vintage pendant, which is a, a seahorse here. You can just about see the seahorse in there. So another translucent shape. And this one down here is a piece of sea glass. You want to make sure that you've left your um, pieces out for long enough to expose. I did a, another batch earlier on and they're a little bit paler. So this one here, you can see it's quite a lot paler than the new batch. You can also see, see these areas here, the paper wasn't completely dry when I put it out in the sun because I was being impatient. So make sure it's completely dry, otherwise these areas are just going to wash out. So you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> 